Hello everyone and welcome to an analysis of a game that I played yesterday evening in the Birmingham Chess League. It's quite an important game and I won't go into the specifics of how the like format works but basically I needed to win especially with the white pieces so that our team can push for promotion at the end of the season. So my opponent is rated 1901. <clears throat> I'm currently rated 1937. And I'm trying to get to 2000 ELO. So regardless of the league situation, I also want to win just for the ELO. Because he's fairly high rated, right? So I go for E4. You know, but I think Bobby Fischer always said, like, you know, tried and tested. It's the best way to go for an advantage. My opponent plays e5. I was actually expecting c5. Um, so I couldn't get much information on what my opponent plays uh, before the game, during preparations. But I, I think I must have found a different guy with the same surname when I was researching. Because whoever, that, whoever I was finding online, they played the Sicilian. But... I, I like playing against d5. I play the Vienna instead of the typical knight f3. My opponent plays knight f6, and we go for the Vienna gambit. So here, black can't take this pawn because we push e5, and the knight can't go anywhere because the queen cuts these off, the knight cuts these off. So the knight has to retreat, and I mean... Does anyone really want to play this? It's like a king's gambit, but ten times better. So, anyway, my opponent plays uh, d5, which is the best move, and we follow in theory. F takes e5, attacking the knight. Knight takes c4, and queen f3 is the popular move now. In the past, knight f3 was... Probably more popular, but Gotham Chess, uh, he, he really pushes for this Queen F3 move. And I can see why. I absolutely love it. Uh, I have so much success in this line. So I guess I'm kind of just up, up there, digging up Levy, but you know. Uh, yeah, so Queen here. And here my opponent plays Knight Takes Knight, which. It, it's subpar, really, but it's not bad. And here, you can take it with either pawn. You don't want to take it with the queen, like, simply because of queen here check, right? So, queen takes, queen here, g3, check, and it's just the classic fork, right? So, you have to take with one of the pawns. You can take with the d pawn and open up the bishop, and you're looking to queenside castle, and your rook is staring at this pawn. And it's quite an active position, right? Both your bishops can get out quite easily. But I don't like playing this line for the simple fact that in many like French structures with the black pawns here, um, and some Cairo structures where the black pawns are like this, the white pawn sitting on e5 just does such a nice job of controlling the black position right and personally i'm really comfortable playing in those structures like playing in particular pawn structures is really important uh when you start to move up higher in chess right but here my pawn is there right but it's isolated it's got no pawns on the files next to it so it can't be protected from the. <laughs> it, it can't be protected from behind, right? <clears throat> because there's no pawns on those files. So it's a bit weak. And I get activity. But personally, I prefer this structure. Um, simply because I get the pawns like this, ideally. And then my pawn on e5 is really, really solid. So, yeah. We get knight takes, b takes. Bishop e7. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not the best, but 
it's not bad. It's just solid. D4, playing principled. Um, <clears throat> this opening is also quite quite interesting because the way these pawns are set up, they really restrict the black bishop's movement because uh, it can't go anywhere that it wants to go. So commonly, you'll see this f6 break at some point to try and challenge this pawn and get rid of it, right? So a lot of the game, I'm focusing on not letting him play f6. So we, anyway, he castles, bishop d3, just staring at the king side. Um, a move like f6 here, I believe you can go for this sacrifice. And I think it's just a draw, but it just shows why the bishop is important on g3, right? Because in a future position, say, I don't know, you can somehow get your bishop to h6 very quickly. Like, it becomes pretty devastating. Uh, but my opponent didn't play that. He plays c5, which is principled, because obviously I don't want to take and ruin my pawn structure. Having double isolated pawns on the C file and an isolated pawn on the E file is just bad, obviously. So I go for knight E2 and C4, attacking my bishop, especially because I've just put my knight there to block off the bishop's retreat, right? So the only move is bishop F5. <clears throat> Whilst it's attacked, it is also defended. So my opponent plays bishop takes, queen takes, and queen d7. And I saw this line back here. Uh, I, I, I calculated ahead to this position. I saw queen d7, and I was like, okay, I don't know whether I want to trade queen since I need to win this game. If I play something like queen f3, f6, and I'm like, huh, this is not good. He's going to open this file. He's going to attack my queen. He's going to question the integrity of my structure. My king is still in the center. Like, it is not sitting pretty at all. And Black's bishop's going to come to life. His knight is going to come in. Um, maybe it'll rotate around here or something. But I, I, I hated this. I also considered here... So f6, and the rook is no longer x-raying my queen, and my queen can take on e5, so I don't have to take him. But still f6, and I'm like, what? Okay, I castle, takes, 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 takes. Knight c6. And I saw up to here, and I was like, I have no development. Black is about to swing his rook to the e-file, and I'm screwed. Like, I'm, I'm not screwed, but I'm white. I should be playing for the advantage. So, I reject those ideas. In hindsight, I wish I'd have played knight g3, so I can take back with the knight. But I castled, so that I could take with the rook. And here he plays knight a6, which I overlooked. I was expecting knight d7, knight b6 to defend the pawn. But my opponent went for this maneuver to defend the pawn and the b5 square to prepare an eventual b5 push. And I thought, huh, where is my advantage now? Like, I know I'm not winning. But I must, like, with, with, with this space advantage and the fact that the d5 pawn is quite weak because it can't be defended from behind, right? It's a backwards pawn. Um, now, fortunately for black, the d file isn't open to attack it, but I'm, I'm thinking here, like, I really should have an advantage. So I play rook b1, just attacking here to force b6. I thought forcing b6 was a good thing. Um, my rook can come up to b5 at some point and attack the pawn, but with the knight on c7, it defends that square, so it's quite ingenious. But I thought that b6 was useful because it left this square uh, undefended, and I thought that, you know, with the pawn here, 
I'm not going to go to either of these squares anyway, right? With the pawn back on b7, it controls c6. So it's just kind of like an in-between move. Um, and you never know, my opponent could have done something like play rook b8, and then I'm quite happy because I'm like, his rook's really passive. So b6, knight g3. The computer wants bishop g5, takes, takes. And I don't understand. I don't think the computer really, like, believes in itself either. So it calls this an inaccuracy, but <laughs> I don't know. It's just the computer doing computer stuff, right? So, um, here, he plays knight c7, as intended, and my opponent should have played, sorry, Sorry, go back a second. He should have played g6 according to the computer. In which position I can play the brilliant move, bishop g5. And I was looking at ideas of this. I probably wouldn't have been ballsy enough to go for it in this position. But the point is, if takes takes, like, the position is equal, to be honest. It's a bit of a false brilliant move. If black accepts the sacrifice, then... Then we've got something to work with, right? Because we're down the exchange, but we have a pawn for it. And our bishop is going to sit on f6, completely control this king. The knight can jump in at anywhere it wants. And it's crushing. And he can never play f6 because my bishop controls the square. So we can't get rid of this pawn, right? So this pawn is very, very important. But my opponent doesn't play g6. He plays knight c7. And I bring my rook back to free up the square for my knight to attack his bishop. So he plays rook f8 to free up the f8 square for his bishop. So knight f5, bishop f8. And now I play rook g3. I'm not expecting my opponent to hang this pawn somehow, but I've got a lot of pressure. And, you know, if I could move again, um, knight check here. And I win a pawn. Because obviously the pawn's pinned, so we can't take the knight. So there is some life in the position. My opponent plays g6, which I was expecting. And at this point, my opponent's down to 33 minutes. So we start the game with 80 minutes each. We get an extra 10 seconds every move. So my opponent is on about half an hour here. And I am just under an hour. So from here on out, I'm thinking, okay, because over the board chess, if you haven't played it before, it's very psychological. Like, having that human interaction completely changes the game. Um, until you actually experience it, it's hard to explain. But my opponent, I'm, I'm watching him, he, he looks a bit nervous, um, kind of like tapping his feet and whatever, and just by his facial expressions, I think, okay, I've got some pressure here, and considering he's taking so long on his moves, I think I can work an advantage if I pose him some problems. So I play bishop h6. Now, if takes, takes, king g7, I was going to play knight g4, bring the knight into f6, and claim an advantage, right? That was my plan, because g6, I essentially forced him to play by playing rook g3. g6 is really the only move. And then I weaken the dark squares, and if I can trade his dark squared bishop off, whoops, if I can trade his dark squared bishop off, then the dark squares become weak, and I can plant a knight on f6, or d6 eventually, and I'm playing against those dark squares, right? So... My opponent plays rook e6, which I actually don't understand. And I tried to use the computer to understand it. But I couldn't figure it out. I, I, I don't, I, it's the best move, but I don't know why. I think it's just to control the f6 square to prepare f6. That makes the most sense to me, right? So I play rook f1 because obviously the pawn still can't take the knight because it's pinned. 
and <clears throat> I know that F6 is an incredibly important idea, so I'm just monitoring it with this rook. Then he plays king h8, which is a mistake. And the better move was apparently f6, in which case, I'd seen this, I was planning bishop f4 to x-ray the knight so that I'm threatening to take the pawn. Uh, because, okay, say so he plays a nothing move. You have takes and we're attacking here. My opponent can't attack the knight because at the end of it, this pawn is still pinned, right? So I was preparing bishop f4, f takes, bishop takes. And the computer says plus 0 0.2, but my opponent's low on time, remember? And this position just looks awful. The d4 pawn is still weak. d5, sorry. My bishop is a monster. Like, it can't be removed because the bishop can't challenge it because my knight and my bishop work together beautifully. And I've just got so much pressure. So here I'm, I, I, I was very happy. So I was hoping for f6. My opponent plays king h8, which is worse. So here, the logic is that he's unpinning so my, he's actually threatening to take my knight, knight now. And if I move my knight, then my bishop's undefended. So I have to take his bishop, only move. Rook takes. And here I go, knight e3. I could have gone to d6. But I thought that my knight, whilst it looks pretty, it's not actually doing anything. Sure, it's attacking here, but he can play f5. And I can't take en passant because he takes my knight. And here I've got a protected pass pawn, but I'm not really very happy with the position. Um, I thought I could do better. So I go to e3. Now this just keeps an eye on this pawn, so the knight has to say guarding it. And I'm thinking about coming here to get into f6, because if I can land a knight on f6, my opponent can't move. Uh, yeah, so my opponent plays f5 to stop that idea because he can't let me go here and here and stop his pawn from moving because then it's a huge weakness. So he plays f5, which again, my pawn is now passed and protected. Um... Here my opponent is down to 20 minutes, and I have 40 minutes, so again, in my, in my head I'm thinking, okay, I've got an advantage, it's not winning, but there's something here. All I need to do is pose my opponent as many problems as possible, and at some point he's going to make a mistake, right? So I play knight g4. The computer says it's a mistake, right? The computer here wants rook g to f3, threatening, okay, say a6 is played, threatening g4, right? Because the pawn can't take, because it's pinned. And previously, my rook was standing here, so I couldn't play g4, right? So the idea is that my opponent has to play h5 to monitor the square. And then h3 to try and play it again. And then h4 to stop the advance, because he can take on Poisson. But this allows rook here, and he can't play g5, because then the pawn hangs. So he has to sacrifice the pawn. So I don't see how the computer gives h5 as the best move, to be honest. It just... He just wants to give up a pawn. But in this kind of situation, my opponent would have to spend so long calculating that. And he would then see he goes down a pawn. And he'd be like, okay, I can't do that. So anyway, I play knight g4 because I see a really nice knight maneuver. My knight 
I want it on one of these squares because I can attack here and I and I can basically just attack the rooks, right? So how do I get to f4? To get to f4, I need to be on one of these squares. But how do I get there? So if I want to get to here, I need to get to one of these squares. But I, I, I can't. Like, I can't get to any of these squares, if you get what I'm saying. So you need to, like, figure out how you can maneuver your, your knight to get it to a specific square. So what I see is knight here, knight here, knight here, and then knight there. So I access it from h3, which is why I play knight g4, right? To go f2, h3, f4. Then I can control the six square, which is vital for pushing my pawn. I can pressure g6. And I can attack d5, which keeps this knight pinned down. It's all about restricting my opponent's pieces, especially because he's so low on time, like I say. Here my opponent plays knight, G, knight e8 to stop my knight coming in from f6, which I never intended to do, but it was like a decoy threat, right? And he brings his knight back. So I go with my plan. Again, the computer wants me to double up, which, okay, maybe that is the best. But at this point, I'm playing quickly. Um, my opponent's low on time, like I said. He's about 15 minutes now. And I'm trying to catch him off guard with this plan. And he doesn't, he doesn't see it. He plays rook f7. And then knight h3. And my opponent, like, he looks dejected because f4 comes with a double attack and g5 comes with a double attack, right? Knight forks are tricky. Now the computer gives rook c6 here, right? Because it steps out of this fork and out of this fork, right? So I can only choose to attack one of them. And the computer line here goes knight f4, rook d7, h4 to try and pry apart the pawn structure with h5, knight c7, h5, knight e6, takes, takes, and a4 to control b5. Whether we would have got that, I don't know. But white has a commanding position for sure, especially with the protected pass pawn. And the fact that this pawn structure is really difficult for black to create anything with. But my opponent plays h6 to stop this. So I just go to f4. And it's a massive fork. My opponent plays rook c6. And I don't want to take here. Because I'm kind of... I mean, okay, this isn't a very good move because black can kind of like unravel a little bit. Don't get me wrong, it's still completely winning, but he can he can create a little something, you know? He has a little bit of play, and I don't want to allow that. So instead I take here. The king can't step onto the file because I'm going to play knight here with a discovered check and win the rook. So the king moves to h7. Then I bring the knight back to h4 because I'm attacking this pawn. And at this point, it, it, my opponent is on 10 minutes and I'm on half an hour. So again... I'm just trying to play quickly. Like I'm playing. I'm trying to play simple chess. I know I'm going to win this pawn, and I'm going to go two pawns up, and that's completely winning. So why complicate it? My opponent plays knight g7, rook gf3. Finally, my rook goes there that the computer's been calling for the whole time. And I simply, he has two defenders, and I have three attackers. And he can't defend. The king can't come here because the knight controls it. The knight also cuts off any counterplay from his rook. It's just such an easy position to play. My opponent has nothing. 
So he plays h5 to prevent g4, which is the best move, because if I can get g4 in, he can't take because of the pin, then I can take with the pawn and get, uh, once this g-pawn goes all the way up to f5, I've got like a pair of passed pawns, and that's unstoppable. So he's still playing accurately. And then I play knight to f5, just taking the pawn. My opponent doesn't want to trade, so he goes knight e6, because he's got to try something, right? I bring my knight back to e3, attacking the pawn, attacking the rook. Rook takes, rook takes, knight g5, attacking my rook and looking at the e4 pawn, uh, square even. And here... I realize that, well, I'm surprised he hasn't resigned, but I'm like, it's completely over. Like, this is so winning. So I go rook f4, because I know he wants to go here. Uh, I know he wants to bring the knight here. So once I take this pawn, the knight will lose its defender, and my rook will be attacking it, right? So he plays rook g6, and this threatens... Knight h3 check. Move the king. And he takes the pawn. And hilariously, this is only minus one. Even though I'm down a full rook. The pawns are just so strong because I kick the knight out. I take this pawn. And I've got connected past pawns. And I might actually be able to save it. That's how strong the position is. And that's why I love this pawn structure so much, because it's so difficult for black to deal with, especially later on in the game. But obviously there's no need to allow that. I play king to f1, because if I go to f2, then the knight here comes with check. And if I go to h1, it's potential back rank stuff. There's no need. I go king f1, knight in, knight takes pawn, which attacks the knight. Knight d2 check. Now, if I come here, he can take the pawn. If I um, go to e1, he can take the pawn. So, I go to f2 because he can't return with his knight to give a check because I'm controlling that square. And he just has zero counterplay. Absolutely none. Here, he resigns. He ends with 7 minutes on his clock, and I had 27, so the time usage from me was perfect, in my in my opinion. My opponent played well, to be fair, but he just messed up. E even here, I'm, I'm pushing for a win. I think King h8 just gave the game away, and... Here, he was so low on time that I have all the play. So I just pose him questions, and he has to respond. And the moment he responds incorrectly, I pounce. And that happens here. I pounce with knight f4, and the game's over. So this is the reality of games once you start getting higher rated. Um... These guys are good. They've been playing for many, many years. Um, like, most of them know each other. Um, I can explain the format more in another video if people are interested. But it's like a 6v6 team thing. Like at the Chess Olympiad. Um, so I'm very happy with the game. It was is, is going to push my rating up a bit more as I'm trying to get to 2000. And the team wins the match overall which is really important in us trying to get promoted to the top division. So we're currently in Division 2 out of 10 in the Birmingham League. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions whatsoever, please leave a comment. And I hope you enjoyed my first video. Uh, see ya.